Prostitution is an economic activity which generates huge cash flows. In countries where this business is illegal and hidden in a dark corner, no one knows the exact amount of money involved. As part of the informal economy, the benefits are distributed directly and indirectly into the hands of stakeholders. The sex workers are the most invested. They use the body as a commodity and suffer mental trauma in return, but the least return on that investment. They are thoroughly exploited as they struggle to find their way to financial independence. Kolkata is the fourth largest city in India, packed with more than 14 million people. It used to be India's capital and the center of its administration. There were a lot of buildings constructed during the British colonization of India, and they're still in use, even if they're old and dilapidated. Inside that alley through the building, there are approximately 15,000 sex workers plying their trade. Sonagachi is the largest red light district in Asia, with endless customers using the services on offer 24 hours a day. Of course, there's a lot of money in circulation. Nobody knows how much because this is an illegal business. Traditionally, most of the client's money goes to a woman who is in charge of the brothel, called the madam. Salita has been working in Sonagachi for about 15 years. She serviced 15 to 20 customers per night in her first 10 years. A customer would pay between 700 and 1,600 Indian rupees. All of this was kept by the madam. Madam, ki kollo poisha kintu amake dilo na. Madam er kache rekhe dilo. Madam bolle tuje badi jabi tokhon diye dobo. Aro amar didi ra jab pashe pashe didi ra bolle kire tuje poisha ar kono bhag nish na. Bhag system, mane commission system, commission bolche mane 50 50 chilo. Eksho ta ka income kolle. Salita never got to see any of the money she earned until a bank opened. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. This is a prostitute's bank, established by a prostitute and which only provides services to prostitutes. This is a legitimate financial institution, which was founded over 23 years ago. The idea of opening a bank came from a group of sex workers who felt that the madam was skimming too much from their earnings and taking advantage of them. But when talking to them, I, we came to know that uh, hardly any bank en encourages them to open their bank account. Why not? Why? They're one of the customer. Why bank doesn't want them? Yes, to that that's customer. that's an uh, important issue. I think in our society, they are seen as bad women, fallen women like that. So, so it's an attitudinal issue. But in addition to that, there is a legal issue also. They did their work, but didn't get paid. When there was a reason to spend money, they had to rely on informal loans with high interest rates. They were trapped in the sex trade cycle, repaying endless debt. The only way out was to have financial independence. When starting the bank, there were many obstacles. There was hindrance from other stakeholders like the madam and loan sharks. When we opened up this cooperative society, they were very unhappy and angry. In fact, they tried all possible ways to disrupt these activities. They threatened the sex workers and the daily collector who visit the sex worker house and collect money. Finally, they came to my department with a loaded gun to threat me that... With a gun. With a gun. They overcame the obstacles, however, and were able to offer banking services. The prostitute's bank has special interest rates. The interest rate on deposits is high, 
while the borrowing interest rate is lower than commercial banks and is extremely low when compared to informal lenders. The informal loan interest rate is about 300% per year, while with the prostitute's bank, it's about 10 to 15%. This bank not only helps sex workers to survive, but also contributes to their families. Salita can pay her nephew's tuition fees until he graduates as an engineer because of the bank. सकाले घूमिए जा Apart from the special interest rates, this bank offers other special services. Salita doesn't have to go to the bank if she wants to deposit money. A bank official will go to pick up the deposits at the brothel. This is a delivery deposit money service for those women who don't have time to go to the bank due to their work. These simple and approachable strategies suit the customers and the bank. It encourages them to make saving decisions. This convenience and reliability gradually leads them to financial stability. The bank also invests the deposited money for the benefit of the depositors. Today a small group of customers is waiting for a bank clerk with passbooks and cash. This is money earned from their hard work. In this group, many look young. Poverty teaches them to find their well-being through saving. Most of India's 1.3 billion people lack economic and educational opportunities. The number of prostitutes in India is estimated at 20 million, with more than half thought to be doing it voluntarily. I was not able to do it, but I was able to do it. I was able to do it, but I was able to do it. My father was able to do it every day, so I was able to do it every day. I was able to do it every day, so I was able to do it. The bank has enabled this woman to live a good life. She has enough money to rent a room and to work freelance without doing it through a madam. She can save the money left over from the cost of living in the bank until she can pay for her nephew's tuition. This small room has all the necessities. Daytime is personal time for relaxation, hobbies and general daily activities. She applies makeup, colors her lips to make them look attractive, and dresses in a sari. Then she waits for a client to call to make an appointment. She doesn't have to go out and find customers on the streets, but not every prostitute can live like this. Many young women are forced into becoming sex workers. It's been estimated that more than 10 million prostitutes are victims of human trafficking. काका हमारे बाड़ी टा आज तो हमारे खावा दा को तो गोली चिलो को बाबा माँ ताको नो ये बोलते चलो तो क्या काजे दो काजे जब हमारे नाम करे फोन आगे चलते बिकड़ी को ले दी चिलो दो बच्चों चिल्लम दो बच्चों को लड़ा लोग के भालो में से चिल्लम तास्ता में पाली है इसको। Whether voluntary or forced, prostitution itself is a profession that involves both physical and mental abuse, and becomes even more difficult if they fall pregnant. Many women hope to use pregnancy to develop a commitment to a man as a way out of the profession. Unfortunately, it often doesn't work out that way. They have to stay in this job, being prostitutes, and have to raise children. How do they cope in this situation? This is a non-governmental organization called New Light. They not only take care of these sex workers' children, but also provide them with an education and a place to rest. 
to prevent them from entering the cycle of sex trafficking like their parents. This place is full of children all day long. They can't go home yet because their home is being used as their mother's place of work. Their favorite activity is watching cartoons. Everyone sits quietly, eyes focused on those cartoons dancing on the TV screen. When it's over, the nanny will provide various other activities for the children, like dancing. Their body movements show that dancing is in the blood of every Indian. Children sing or perform in groups in front of their friends and get some snacks. After finishing the performance, the kids will gather for meditation to sing the national anthem and help each other set up tables to take an extra tutorial class. This 10-year-old girl was born and raised here. She knows that a few meters away, her mother is working in the sex trade. Even if she accepts her mother's profession, she doesn't want to live like that. Her goals reach beyond a big brothel in the middle of the city. What you want to be when you grow up? Doctor. You want to be a doctor because you want to help mama too, right? I mean, The children have to attend extra tutorial classes until 8 p.m., then go to rest. Anyone whose mother doesn't have a client can go back home and sleep. If their mother is working, the children will spend the night at the center. Their mother's work requires the utmost privacy. It's also a job that children should be kept as far from as possible. Without this center, children would often be forced to wait on the streets. The stigma that is attached to uh, being a child of a woman in prostitution, the stigma of poverty, the stigma of not having a proper place of stay. Sometimes they don't even have their birth documents. Not knowing who actually your biological father is. So it's just not one thing. So, so many things, so many factors that would normally destroy anybody. Even though this center cannot solve all the problems, it gives them a dedicated and safe space to spend their time in a worthwhile way and appropriately for their age. Also, they don't have to be taken away from their mother too soon. <laughs> Both the prostitute bank and the daycare center for sex workers' children are efforts to give freedom to and empower women to be self-reliant, preventing the spread of sex trafficking to the next generation. This girl in Asari's mother is a prostitute who took a loan from the prostitute's bank to pay her tuition fee. She doesn't want her children to follow in her footsteps. আমার মা সেক্স ওয়ার্কার এখানে ছিলেন আমিও এখানে ছোট থেকে ছিলাম বাট আমার মা স্কুলে ছোট থেকেই ভর্তি করেছিল কিন্তু আমার মা চাইছিল যে আমি এখানে না থাকি মানে আদার কোনো বোর্ডিং বা হোস্টেলে গিয়ে পড়াশোনা করি তো ক্লাস ফাইভ আমার মা আমাকে একটা গ্রামের হোস্টেলে দিয়ে দেয় সেখানে আমি থাকি তো ওখান থেকে আমি মাধ্যমিক পাস করার পর এখানে এসে কলেজে ভর্তি হয় she had to leave the job after the boss found out that her mother is a prostitute. She quit her job and came to work as an assistant manager at a prostitute's bank. The place where she feels comfortable, with no judgmental looks. The inside of the bank building is quite hot and stuffy, without unnecessary decoration to make it look impressive. The most important thing is that all the women need a place where they will not be exploited or taken advantage of. When they're running out of money, they had to rely on an informal lender. The compound interest rate is brutally high, with no grace period on repayments. Nowadays, they apply for a bank loan at a fair interest rate when they need money. This bank is sustainable with special interest rates because there are few bad debts. Most sex workers who are clients of banks are honest customers. 
Once they borrow the money, it will be fully repaid. We put that uh, when you are taking loan, there would be two guarantors on her behalf. So they try to, uh, I think, negotiate with the person who has taken loan and make most of the times uh, it is recovered. So they're very honest customer. Yes, yes, most of them. When the sun goes down, Sonagachi comes alive with bright pink neon lights. Sex workers gradually come out to raise their hands to greet potential customers on the street. Some hover around hoping to attract customers. This group of girls buys flowers to decorate their hair or their rooms to welcome customers. Our customer na pasan dapat. Hindi? No. Uh -huh. Bangla ba? Bangla. Ei phool guno, ani ei gulo to amra thakur ke porai jao to. Ar ei jo rajuni gonda ache, ei gulo amader customer ka khub pasan dapat. Mane amader mathay laga bhai gonda dapat. Onara hate pore gonda shobe. These beautiful flowers may attract some customers. When they get a customer, they'll get paid. Some of the fees may be allocated to the banks established and operated by prostitutes like them. The bank had only 300 million rupees when it was established 20 years ago. Nowadays, it has around 3 billion rupees in turnover per year. Stable financial growth is a safety net for prostitutes for the day when their flowers wither. With so many limitations, most women in Sonagachi will never escape from this profession. For many sex workers in Asia's largest brothel, what they want is perhaps not pity or sympathy, but it is an opportunity to access capital sources and the ability to save regularly. When that opportunity did not present, they built it themselves. <laughs>